What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Tyranny. My name is Splattercat. Pretty happy to have you here today as we hang out. And actually, we're over at the camp for the chorus. Uh, we're trying to find out what our second mission is before we go in. Apparently, we've got eight days until everybody in the valley die. Every everybody in the valley die. Every every everybody. The fifth eye must authorize all prisoner visits. So I assume that they're probably for a quest later on. And so we're over here. We needed to talk to the leader, the five faces or the five whispers or the five booty holes or whatever his name is. I don't know. I'm not on his team. I'm with the other side. I'm with the cool guys. A fractured iron sword. My bronze spear is 7 to 12. That's 9 to 12. It's actually a little bit better, but I can hit from further away with the spear. And the spear's kind of sexy, man. I don't get a lot of games that allow me to use spears, and so I'm trying to stick to that pretty tightly. For right now, but yeah, welcome back to our adventures. Well, look who we have here. Chewing on some manner of cut, a heavy set soldier flings spittle and crumbs as she talks. The fate binder finally shows himself. I'm Reg, the second soldier chimes in. This is Baz. We were wondering when you might pay the camp a visit. Fifth Eye has been a little star for attention. He'd order us to, to watch you like a troublesome babe and make sure you don't get out of line. Baz knits her fingers together, joints crackling as she smiles. Reg clears her throat louder, his throat loudly scowling at Baz. Something like that. If you have questions, you can ask us. Good luck finding anybody else in camp who will give you answers, though, or even a smile. Anything we can do for you? Um, no, we're good. It's alright. People seem a little hostile around here. That's understandable. I'm probably responsible for the death of their kinsmen at some point. I had to make some summary judgments, so if you're not down with the synopsis of the game, you're just jumping in at this point. I'm a judge. My job is to go around and resolve disputes for our great and evil overlord. It's pretty awesome. I feel like I've got a lot of authority, and I feel like I get to call shots. It makes me pretty happy. Not everybody gets that in life. Not everybody gets that, and so I think we've landed in a decent place. There is a hidden crate back here that I definitely wanted to be privy to. We've got a little bit of grain, which gives us vitality. And then we've got a 47 locked subterfuge crate. Okay, what's her current subterfuge? Is it dope? Is it amazing? What's her subterfuge? It's 39. But we needed 47 to get inside that crate over there. So unfortunately, its secrets remain boxed in. Nothing we can do about it. Crate it up for the future. Who's the poor bastard that got this little lean-to over here? Everybody else has these baller out. Oh, we can go inside the tents? What? Oh, no, I definitely don't want to rest for eight hours. We're on a time limit right now. I thought maybe I'd be able to go inside, but nope. The binder of Tunan arrives. Squealing with teenagers timber, the fifth eye's voice makes your gums itch and your fingernails feel in need of a trim. And we just have, we've just we just finished having a bit of sport with some captives. But worry not, we'll have more fun with another badge momentarily. Dressed in the bronze red regalia of the Crimson Spears, the fifth eye beckons you to stand close, wagging a blood-spattered glove. Have you come here to order the Scarlet Chorus to die so the disfavored might live? That was how you played it back at the Vellum Citadel, after all. Typical reasoning of a Northman. Disfavored lives matter more than conscripts, no? Absolutely, we're trained soldiers. You guys are garbage troops. Ain't nobody got time for your Imperial Guard, boo. Now that you've issued this edict and doomed us all to die, come here to help us climb out of the hole? Chirps of laughter emanate from under his mask. I trust you are getting your warriors together for battle? We know the Oathbreakers are, forced in the, are focused in the Citadel beneath the mountain spire, but we have learned this is not their only nest. The Fifth Eye wags a hand in the air with a high-pitched squeal of displeasure. Given their pattern of attacks, they must have a second group maintaining camp here in the Outer Valley. And unless we deal with this second group, they'll attack from behind the moment we cross the river. My last group of scouts returned with a new batch of prisoners, and one of these prisoners claims she can lead us to the Vendrian Guard's secondary camp, though there are shreds of deception in her voice. I could use your help questioning this Varia Kell. Perhaps you'll get less screams and tears and more useful information out of her. If we knew where to ambush the Oathbreakers, we could try and take their captain. Show him the wisdom of joining the chorus. Alright. So, why not just ask the Archon of Secrets? I thought he could interrogate anything. An unintelligible mutter escapes from under the fifth eye's mask as his posture stiffens. I do not tell the voices of Narat what to do, nor do I question his motives. The Archon is busy, plotting the efficient destruction of these Oathbreakers, and he is not to be disturbed. I've known the Archon to demand personal interrogations, but it's only ever been with the leader's mages or others of great merit. I've often imagined the interrogation process is not to be taken lightly. 
Perhaps it's downright exhausting for Narat. Alright, well then I will speak with the prisoner. I'll meet you there. She is waiting by the other prisoners. Yeah, just walk over there lazily. It's not like we're on a time limit or anything. It's not like we're all gonna die if we don't get there quick enough, you know. All the time in the world. All the time in the world. So which prisoner? Varia Kell? Varia Kelly? Choir man, let the fate binder speak with our catch of the day. Oh, he's gonna release her. Gotcha. Or are you Variah Kill? Oh, this is Variah Kill. Please, someone! I wish to bow before the voices of Narat! I thought all could find redemption in the chorus. A woman in the makeshift armor of the Vendrian Guard lurches forward in agony. Her soiled, trembling legs suggest she's been forced to stand for days. This one, he flippantly waves at the prisoner, was hollering earlier that she knows the location of the Vendrian Guard encampment. But she isn't being entirely honest. I told this thing. The prisoner turns pale a moment before a look of determination comes over her face. That I wanted to guarantee I'd live and be welcomed into the chorus as a captain. Then I'll talk. Otherwise, they'll, they'll just kill me once I've opened up. I was dumb enough to join with the Vendrian Guard, but I'm not dumb enough to give away my bargaining bronze. Well, you claim you would disavow people for the Scarlet Chorus. Why your change of heart? Because I want to live, and you don't need to be the Archon of Premonitions to know that the Younger Realms are gone for good. She blinks several times, catching her breath. Kairos is the new strength of the Tears, and I would rather stand with his Archons than be crushed by them. Alright, then tell me what you know, and I can see to your release. I heard the Chorus is looking for Captain Pelox Florian and his crew. I can lead you to them, but only if you release me. She turns her head, taking a long look at skewered and smoldering corpses around her. She tugs at her restraints, but to no avail. Hmm, you're lying. Why don't you tell me what you actually know and I'll see about saving you? Well, I... You see, shaken by your demand, her lips move wordlessly for several seconds. So I don't know exactly where the rest of my crew is, but I saw, and I mean, I could tell you... She shakes her head, catching her breath. Search that one. She reaches up with her right leg and points at her foot, calling attention to a nearby pile of corpses. The tall, dark one missing most of his face. Check his left boot. He was the literate one in our crew and he had the orders. With a snap of his fingers, a pair of choirmen yank the boot off the fallen guardsman. A rolled parchment slides out of the boot and is thrust into the fifth eye's hands. He unfurls the scroll to give it a read. It's nonsense. Just a mash of words. Laughter erupts from under the mask. She said she had information and she gives us garbage. Slay this wretch for wasting our time. He snaps his fingers at a nearby scarlet fear who promptly snatches a long knife from her belt. I heard her say she'd swear fealty to the voices of Narat. Initiation right would be in order. Seeing as you are an expert on the subject as of late, I will entertain your wisdom on the matter. But what then would you propose we do with her? Hmm. We can use her as a slave, we can use her as a spy, or we can have her prove herself by killing the other two guardsmen who wouldn't speak. I like having agents. I think having an agent would be very, very good. This one will obviously make them like us better because it's bloodthirsty, but this one right here would serve us in the long term, I think. Send her back as our agent. When the time comes, she will aid us, or we will track down her kin. I will need to think of a good explanation for my escape, but I'm certain I can return and avoid suspicion. Thank you. You will not regret this act of mercy. This will end amusingly, for the Vendrian Guard would be smart to assume she only escaped by our whims. You there. The fifth eye barks at a pair of guards by beckoning them forward. Release our newest recruit. She has orders to infiltrate the Oathbreaker. See that she is escorted to the river's edge. Variah inhales deeply, flexing her fingers as she shakes off the stiffness of being tied to a post for days. I will return to the Vendrian Guard and act well my part, and await further instructions from the chorus. With a nod, she follows her escorts out of the camp. We're no closer to finding the Oathbreaker's position. Not with this cryptic mess. She promised us answers and all she gave us was gibberish. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I highly doubt it's gibberish. Uh, more likely, it's one of the local scripts. The voice comes from another prisoner tied up next to Varia. An older gentleman with the quills. Ink files and parchment scrolls one finds on the sages of the School of Ink and Quill. Ink smudges over his cheeks, temples, and ears. His clothes appear charred between the rips of fabric. You spot burn scars along his arms. 
Despite being emaciated and tied to a post, he offers a beaming smile. Could you read this? Uh, well, uh, let me see. Uh, I, I, I can't... Uh, uh, oh, mm, mm -hmm. uh -huh. You hold the parchment in front of the bound sage, and his eyes dart down the length of the missive. He reads the words a second time, nodding in silence. Uh, so, uh, I don't know exactly what it says, but I'm half certain that's Sage Selwyn's handwriting. I'm sure I could decipher that in a few hours' time. Uh, don't need my hands free, but uh, I think better when not tied to a post. <laughs> I know, I'm weird that way. Look at this dude over here, he's got cotton candy. See, that's why people join the chorus right there. He's got that co he's got that cotton can dizzle. Everybody wants cotton candy, man. Cotton candy's delicious. Always gives me the shits, though. A few hours? Either you can read it or you cannot. What use is a sage that doesn't know his letters? I've heard all I need to hear. I say we have some fun with him. Oh, your life depends on you translating the scroll. Now. Uh... I would love to help. I just need some time. Uh, that's written in another sage's shorthand. I'd have to sit down with it, or uh, better yet, uh, compare it to a piece of his writing I have stashed on me somewhere. Uh, if I sat down with it while sufficiently sober, it's highly probable I'd figure it out. Sober? Since when do we share the good stuff with the prisoners? No, oh, nobody shared. Right before I was taken prisoner, I imbibed several vials of reagents. I wanted to be numb and disconnected when my captors used me for carnal catharsis. It's made these last few days tied to a post uh, almost enjoyable. Well, it can't hurt to give him a few hours. You read the edict. I don't need to tell you the sundial is working against us. This antelope bag is just trying to stall. The voices of Narat will be upset to know you squandered a source of enemy intelligence. Mm, how true. Then we shan't put him to waste. He will serve as a most riveting source of amusement as we put him on trial. Fatebinder, I beseech you, be my advocate for this trial. I'm no fool, I know the Chorus uses blood, not words, to settle these matters. But you are a servant of the Archon of Justice, are you not? <sighs> Release the prisoner at once, I'm taking him into custody. Not a chance, he's our prisoner. If you think you can crack the information we need out of his skull without troubling the Archon, that's one thing. But you're not walking out of here with our property. So when we grab his mask... Did you hear that, brothers and sisters? Raising his arms to the sky, the fifth eye roars for all nearby to hear. Trial by combat is, above a, is upon us. The sage is unbound from the post, stiff legs nearly buckle as he attempts to walk, and his arms flex and flail in their new freedom. Wiping sweat and grime from his brow, the sage steps close to you with a nervous smile. Rhythmic roaring and the stomping of hundreds of feet in unison flood the camp. Hordesmen begin to circle and swirl about, brandishing weapons and cheering. If they got this worked up to fight the enemy, I venture the war would be over by now. Begin the chant of gathering. Let the warriors know that tonight's entertainment will soon commence. Oh my. Apparently that was an act of war. Grabbing someone's mask and being like, hey. Brothers and sisters. Who among you sets the standard for strength, and who among you will help winnow the weak from the strong? The fifth eye waves his hands in the air, drawing in a gathering of chorus soldiers. Our claimants have been assembled. Let the trial of the Oathbreaker begin. Alright, let's, let's take this slow for right now. Oh, she's already in combat. I was going to swap her to bows, but I guess it'll have to do for right now. What do you do, sir? He's got Titan's Touch. Gives an allied target vitality and might. He's got Restoring Touch. That's pretty good. He's got Quicken. Heals the Fate Binder with a surge of restorative energy. Ooh, I also get Hastened. He's got Renewal, and he's got what looks like Quill Strike. Okay. We'll start off with buffs here. There we go. So we got buffs. The fight is joined. It looks like they're cleaving through the people at the bottom here without too many issues. He has Clash of Iron. Can I automatically, can I tell these to auto-cast? Or do I have to do like everything? Iron Tolling. Barrack and the Fate Binder bang on their shields and armor harassing an enemy. He's compelled to attack Barrack. And my gestures make him confused and off guard. Alright, well we'll strike Iron right here. There we go. Does she have potions? Go ahead and imbibe very quickly. I want to make sure nothing bad happens here. We'll hack and slash our way through this one. We've got enough people in the party now to actually kill effectively, so that's what we'll do on this side with her. 
Oh, I have to be involved for this one. So it looks like some of the attacks are actively linked. Oh, we couldn't sweep that one. Oh, no, you're on fire. Stop being on fire. He's like, yeah, well, you know, if I had a choice. What does this do? One armor penetrated by attacks. So party's weapon and armors get moved up to pristine condition. Increases damage from weapons and protection from armor. Okay, yeah, do that. There we go. I think this trial of combat is going to go... Oh, look, he casted. Look at you over here being all efficient. There's got to be a... Let's see here. There's got to be like an auto-cast setting around here that I haven't fiddled with. Hmm. Either way, not a good day to be these guys. These guys are getting cut through right now. She just gave up and put her arms down and accepted death. Got thrown weapons plus one. By the righteous shedding of blood, we have found our answer. Regrettably, it appears the sage is worthy of leaving our camp alive. The fifth eye offers a short mocking bow to Lantry. By the custom set forth by the voices of Narat, you're free to go, old man. Brag to your grandkids that you fell afoul of the chorus and yet live to tell the story. All right. Now we see if you're worth the effort. Gracious fate by to the sage holds his hands up, cowering backwards. I am humbled that you would put yourself at risk for me. I assure you, you have my full obedience and cooperation. I thought I'd die tied to a post. The sage looks down at his rope-worn wrist in disbelief. Now hand me the parchment. I'm certain I can decipher it. We just decipher next to dead bodies. Well, much of the parchment was weathered, but I could make out the important parts of the text. The note makes mention of a meeting spot west of Trip Nettle. So the old sage knows his words after all. I'd ask that you travel ahead and see if you can't get this Captain Florian to yield to the chorus. They will strike at the first sight of a chorus gang, but perhaps they will parlay if yours is the face that they see. I know the area, and I suggest we go at once. I will show you the way. I'm eager to be far from the stench of this camp. All right. Something's amiss right now. There's a lot of fight in you for an old scholar. Now you're offering to join the expedition? I've met sages every bit as cutthroat as hardened gang bosses. They act the part of doddering scribes, but don't let that fool you. Smart for someone at such an age to be so mistrusting, but I'm not with the Oathbreakers, if that's what you're fishing at. I worked for them under duress, but I've no love of them. I'm not about to pledge to the chorus, and the disfavored wouldn't have me, still. I consider myself a Kairos-fearing vassal of the Overlord's Empire all the same. For as long as I've been a sage, I've been trained to defend myself. We don't spend all of our time binding books and sketching wildlife, just most of it. For centuries, we'd been in a quiet war with the School of Tides and the School of Wild Wrath. You can't travel alone as much as I do and not know the Bronze Dance. Okay, so you won't be a parchment weight during a fight. Good to know. Oh no, I'd like to think I'm worth at least three or four angry peasants in a fight. Alright, well, swear fealty and I'll let you leave this place with me. If that is your price, I will pay it. I, Sage Lantry of the School of Ink and Quill, do pledge my services and skein to the Fate Binder, by extension, to the Court of Tunon. He dips into a steep bow before rising with a solemn smile. I know I may seem old and frail, but I know how to step lightly and not get killed. Really, I won't slow you down. Lead the way. Let me know if I can be of service. Well, are we done here? Let's hightail it to Trip Nettle. If your new pet doesn't behave himself along the way, I'm not above clipping his ears. Okay, so that's done. We've got a guy over here who's called Sniggler Dagos. I don't know what a Sniggler is, but I suppose we find out. Upon noticing your approach, the merchant places his hands on his hips with a deep sigh. Sniggler Dagos at your service. We offer no cis favored iron for sale, but I could promise you that. Ash's ironclad shit stains can salvage all the arms they want while we fuck about with scraps of bent bronze. All right, well, let me see your wares. He winces a little. It's not much, but let me know if you see anything that piques your interest. Scarlet Fury Gloves. Sound pretty sexy. Scarlet Chorus Letter. A Fine Ripper. What is that, like a one-handed thrown weapon? It's a melee attack, and it's... Okay, so it's a javelin. Staggering Burn. A Scarlet Poison. Lesser Healing Potions, and he's got four of them. We don't have a lot of cash right now, though. Not a lot of cash. I think... Open up the stash and let's see what we got here. Hand that over. We'll hand over the helmet as well. I don't really want to deal with all the random fish and reagents and stuff like that right now. So we'll go ahead and drop those off. A head wrap I doubt we're going to be using anytime soon either. Busted helmets. 
I think we probably have somebody that can do the lore thing. But we'll have to figure that out in just a little bit. Turquoise is worth five, so that's not bad. And that puts us at ten gold rings. Hell yeah. Ten bronze rings anyways. Now we've got some pocket change that we can play around with. Scarlet Fury Helm I think we're already wearing. However... There's chorus leather over here with 14% deflection. We don't have the cash for it, though, unfortunately. Damn. All right, we'll find that. I didn't want it anyways. I just wanted Joe Moolah. Let's be on our way. We've got stuff to accomplish here before this gets any more rowdy. Man, they impaled that guy top to who the hell is Quiet Shiv and Shivershank. It proves everything the warrior slams her fist together in a resounding clap, like, for instance, whether you're fit to lead that flock of children behind the members of her gang's posture with weapons held at the ready. Did you not hear the news of the edict? This is a foolish distraction. We ought to be saving our fight for the enemy. He's right. The edict will kill us all if Ascension Hall is not taken soon. Well, until the fifth eye starts the mustering chant, we ain't got nowhere to be. She gestures the gang across from her. So how's our chance to have it out? So now's our chance to have it out before things get serious. Well, what's the problem? No problem here, Lord Binder. She tosses her blade in the air, catching it with a smile on the way down. Captain Fuckwit here seems to think he's about to balk from this challenge. Thinks that because he used to run a ship, he's qualified to run a gang. She spits on the ground, looking up to scowl. So I'm calling him out, because the way I see it, his warriors ought to follow me, not this new blood. Captain Fuckwit was my father. Fuckwit will do just fine. The warrior points at the opposing gang. If we have to prove our strength, we'll do so happily, but I'll have your hands and feet removed and the rest of you kept for my own use. This is foolish, and you'll stop this at once. Excuse me? She widens her eyes in shock. This is our way, Fate Binder, and you have no right to stop us. We're not harming anybody outside the chorus. I don't know who you are, but I don't need your help. He looks back at his gang. I think we can handle ourselves just fine. I can beat him bloody with athletics if I want. I'm gonna do it. I'm a judge. You don't get to talk to me like that. You turn to Shivershank and grab him by the scruff of his scraggly beard. Keening with both shock and pain, he can barely fight back against the sheer force of your strength as you repeatedly punch his face until all that's left is a bloody mess. He crumbles to the ground as everyone beside you slowly and tremblingly walks away. Show your new position, gang boss. That seemed overly violent and unnecessary, but I'm trying to get into character right now. Like, nobody challenges my authority. I am the law! So he's got Renewal. Greater Renewal makes it so that you get even better damage and armor. Gifted Healer. Control Life Skill. The Vigor Skill. Well, what skills do we have, though? Can he create spells? Oh, he can. Okay. Well, he's got two points to apply, so hey. Let's go with... I'm going to make him into a Nuker. So there it is. And now that he's ready to nuke, to drop bombs on your moms, as a sage, you can get Watcher's Judgment. Eh. We'll make that better, and we'll also take his greater healing skill, I guess. Arcane Shield. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Alright, let's be on our way. I've bloodied enough people today, and I can't even loot him afterwards either. So what does this mean? She's now wounded. I saw the tooltip pop up, but I was busy with other stuff. She don't even have a helmet. That's unfortunate, because she could use one. Let's have a look here. We got boots. Stone shield boots, which are 9% base. Probably give those to her so that she's a little bit better off. Got bracers, which are 7 deflection. Those are currently 7, so that's not going to matter. She is, however, wounded, though. I assume what happens is you rest for a little while, and that makes it go away. My bracers are deflection six, so these are better than what I have. So we'll throw those on real fast. Do you have bracers? He's got scholar's gloves. Does he lose anything for casting because he has armor on? It adds time to his recovery, I think, so it makes him take longer to take actions. Horde boots. 3% versus 7%. Make him wear those, I guess. He'll have Horde boots for now. Loktar Ogar and all that. So I can change his colors around if I really, really wanted to. Alright. So there's things we could play around with here. 
Next level, she needs 100 XP. Cool. And then she's also wounded, so she's lost some health. And she's lost some skills. Unfortunate. I wonder if she has to... If running on the road will count. So trip nettle will take how long? Six hours? Alright, off we go. Hopefully we don't have any distractions. We can't afford those right now. Our neck is on the line. And there we are. We're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. I will see you all in the next episode of Tyranny. Hi to everybody, and I'll see you when next we get together. Bye-bye.